Okay, everybody, I'm Jim. Here in my shop, I build kitty cots. I'm a seaplane pilot. And uh, so on and so forth. Anyway, I uh, wanted to get some of my history down. People ask me every now and then, you know, how'd you get to fly seaplanes, etc. and stuff. So I'll go through the real brief stuff here. Uh, kind of from day one, I was born in Evanston, Illinois. Lived in Northfield, Illinois. My father was a minister. My mother, a minister's wife, and uh, they had four kids, and so I'm Jim. I'm, uh, there's my younger sister, Julie, my older brother, Rich, and my older sister above Rich is Lori. And so we lived in Binghamton and grew up there and, uh, you know, from zero until the fourth grade. And then my dad got a different church in Binghamton, New York. Um, this, what the heck was that called? The First Congregational Church in uh, Binghamton. And uh, at that point, you know, so that was in the fourth grade, and then we went, uh, so I spent from fourth grade to seventh grade in Binghamton, and then we moved to Florida. But while in Binghamton, I learned to ski. My parents were, you know, avid skiers, so we skied there. And then we also bought property in uh, the Adirondacks, Binghamton's down lower in New York State, so uh, we bought property in the Adirondacks. My dad and mom wanted to build a summer cabin for us to grow up, you know, through the years, so we did. We built, bought property and built a cabin, rough shell cabin on uh, Long Lake, New York, and that's a small town uh, hamlet of about 900 people, so it was a very interesting time uh, growing up there, so we did fourth, or basically fifth, sixth, and seventh grade there uh, in our early years while we built our cabin, and uh, there was kind of a dualistic thing. There was the summer folks and the townies, so I was a summer kid, and you know, the townies were on their own side of the block, so to speak. I mean, they actually, the townies ran the whole town, and the summer kids just were, uh, you know, a dualistic kind of a thing. But anyway, uh, that's probably when I first met Scott Spengler, who I have to uh, credit most of, all of my in, uh, enthusiasm for flying. That's where it comes from. And uh, he was just a kid in Long Lake who grew up there. His uh, father owned a lumber yard there, and they had four sons. And so I uh, had seen them through the, you know, my early years in the regattas and stuff like that, and you know, summer regattas on the lake, that kind of thing. Didn't really know them very well, but that's uh, I did know who they were, uh, who Scott was, and his family, and you know, I knew a lot of the people, and as I grew up in town there. Anyway, uh, then we moved to uh, uh, Miami, Florida, when I was in the seventh grade, and I went in uh, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, and twelfth grade there. And in 1975, I graduated. The whole time we were in Florida. Uh, I we my, meandered back and forth to uh, Long Lake all the time, you know, for summers. So I spent a lot of time in Long Lake up in there in the summertime as I grew up, you know, from junior high into senior high, and uh, spent tons of time on the lake. Got to know a lot of the summer people and local people, obviously, being in this as a small town. And there was seaplane flying going on on that lake. There was Helms Aero Service, and uh, there was. Uh, Quite a few seaplanes going on. That was a we were right on the lake there, and um, Bill Spengler, who owned Hamilton County Lumber, where I eventually worked, uh, he had airplanes because he built uh, summer homes on the lake up there and on lakes around the Adirondacks, and he flew to the different houses that he was building to inspect them and bring them, you know, back orders, etc. So anyway, um, like I say, we had gone to Florida, then I graduated from. Uh, I've always was, was into woodwork too, but during high school and stuff, so I was a real woodworker. And then in 1975, I graduated and then I migrated out to Colorado with my brother. He was going to college in Greeley, Colorado, so I went there and spent two years out there and uh, did construction work. And then I was, uh, I poured foundations for a company out there. And then I was a uh, manager or a night manager for uh, the Northern Hotel there where I cleaned all of the stuff at night. Uh, you know, the bars and the bathrooms and everything. So I was a janitor, and then I did uh, steam, my steam clean carpets out there for a while and did that for a bit. And then uh, I came back, uh, let's see, I was 75, 76, 77. In 1977, my dad offered me uh, the opportunity to go back to upstate New York and remodel our cabin up there. It was not winterized, so I jumped at that, and he gave me three bucks an hour, and I got to stay for free. So that was in 1977. So I spent 77 and 78 in 79 and 80 and 81 and 82 up there fairly steady uh steady meaning that i would be up there you know working at the then i eventually 
Well, let's see. So I went from Colorado back to Long Lake uh, in 1977, and then I eventually got that that fall. I got a job at the lumberyard, which was Scott's father's lumberyard, uh, Scott Scott Spangler. And uh, so I worked 1977 through 1982, basically, uh, at the lumberyard and spending my summers and falls working in the lumberyard and at the lumberyard and all around Long Lake doing, uh, you know, building jobs and having a great time. And that was the time when I uh, met Scott the most because I was working at his father's lumberyard and uh, they had, Scott had, uh, there was four boys in the family, by the way, there was Scott, Jeff, Greg, and let's see, there was uh, Scott, Jeff, Greg, and Bill. And, um, but I hung around with Scott quite a bit because after work every day he would say, hey, let's go out and fly my dad's airplane. So we'd go out and fly uh, the 206 or the Rocket Chief or the Champ or the 172 Hawk and he would give me the controls and I got super excited about it and then, uh, you know, I was just like dying to be a seaplane pilot. And so then in 1983 I went back to Florida that winter and then I started my first instruction at Tamiami Airport and I had to bring out all my logbooks here. Uh, so I could remember what the heck I did from that point. So in 1983, I started to fly. And then, uh, let's see, I still, there was, let's see, in 1983, I started to fly. Yeah, and then, uh, well, what else did I do, Grant? Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, and then I had a lag there. So I started in 1983, and then I flew, flew, 1983. Then I la then I had a layoff of three years. In 1986, I took it back up in upstate New York. So then I went to, and then they got my. Eventually, I got my uh, private pilot's license in 1986, I do believe, because I went right at it. And then in 1987, I moved to uh, Seattle with my girlfriend. And you know, all the time I was from from 70. Well, Scott had been out here flying for Kenmore Air and also for. Uh, uh, Clyde Carlson at uh, Lake Union Air, and he was always egging me on, saying, "Come on out and fly, come on out and fly." And that was, you know, like that's when I got my license. And then, uh, like I say, in '86, uh, I started. I got my license in '86, and then, uh, oh, let's see, what have I done here? '87. <laughs> yeah, '87. I moved out here and spent a year out here. Got my seaplane rating. And then I said to myself, I'm not going back to Seattle until I, I wanted to fly seaplanes real bad. Scott was here. And I said, I'm not going back to Seattle until I uh, get to fly for, you know, either Clyde or somebody out here. And so I went back to Long Lake for 10 years. And in that time, I went back and remodeled my old house, bought another house, uh, made three apartments out of it. Um, and then I ended up mortgaging my first house that I bought. I bought a house for $11,000 in New York with a partner of mine, and then I eventually bought him out, and then I made the three apartments out of it, uh, you know, from 87, 88, 89, uh, 90. And then um, I ended up mortgaging my uh, house. Uh, let's see, so I got, I mortgaged my first house in 1992, I do believe, because there it is, there's my Citabria, 7 GCBC. Yeah, so in 1992, 1991, no, that was Scott's airplane right there, so, uh, that's 1991, Lake Chelan, I was out doing some, oh, I did some flying with Scott in 1991, 92, uh, and then I bought my air, my first airplane I bought was a Citabria, and that was in 1992 in October. And then I had that for five years and flew the pants out of that. I got 850 hours in that thing. And so here's all, this logbook is all basically just my Satabria flying. Yep, Satabria, Satabria, 99. And then 90, let's see, it's, no, it's all 95, excuse me. Yep, 95, 95, 95. And then it goes into my other logbook. Five. There's 95 again, so 511JH was my Citabria. And then I started flying four. That was 96. Cool. 7GCBC 511JH. That's 95 still. 96. 
And I got my little plane. And then I started flying in 1996. Oh, I was supposed to come out and fly for Clyde then in 1996, and I was married at the time. My wife got in an auto accident in 96 and had traumatic brain injury, so then Helms Aero Service hired me in 1996, and I flew with them. And then in 1990, I flew with them for, uh, yeah, summer and fall. And then in 97, I actually moved out and did fly out for Clyde. That's my first year in 1997, I do believe. Yep, 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 I have 67685 in here. Yep, that was it. 1997 was my first year that I came out. And uh, that was awesome. That was my first year flying for Clyde in Northwest Seaplanes. Now I'll continue on.